Come on, down the course from Cape Bay Valley. Ah, oh, it was fun. Janet Matera's not. Yeah, she won Oscar yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. For a film out in America. Yeah. No, she won't. She yeah. offered me a pal lad. She said, oh, cool, let's have a cup of tea for a minute. Well, I'll have it in the same time. Janet Matera's probably going to be a plain ball with me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but you wish you hadn't have come. He can't hear you. He hasn't got his ears in. <laughs> he still won't hear you. I, I can do that. He don't listen to me at all. He's, he's very because he's only got them. They're quite new. They're irritating his ears. I had it about a week. I think I might have ate it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the photo I put on Facebook of me on the west side. And I'm saying that you and Jess sit in the background about outside the pub. There's two old blokes sitting there. And I said, there's Ken and Jess in the background. Haven't you seen on my Facebook page? Now I'm standing there. The woman took, she wanted to take a photo of me and the son, you see. And then she said, let me have one of your own. So I was standing there and there's, it's like we're right in front of a pub. There's two old blokes sitting there. I said, there's Ken and Jess sitting yeah. in the background. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't jump, man. They're <laughs> two old blokes. That's <laughs> Kelly <laughs> Jess. Yeah. Hey. Jess of the blokes. I bought a couple for the young man. I didn't ever say that when I was young, did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey. I, I was in with you, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I remember you as a young, a young person. Oh no, yeah, it changed, isn't it? Who was that? <laughs> many, many, many years There's ago. electric plugs. No, it's all right. It's, uh, this is it's all run by batteries. There's electric it's plugs either side if you need them. No, I'm, I'm fine, seriously, mate. I've just got a bit of a problem with this. I think it's a bit oh, damp at the moment. I'm trying to get the recorder, oh. audio recorder working. Oh. Ah, here we go. There's some more this side. Oh, There's some more up there. I heard about the night jumping instead of bottles. I just noticed the bottles. Oh, bottles there. some down there, there's some up there, and some in there. I know, I noticed a lot of bottles yeah, yeah. too. That's better. <coughs> it's all good fun. You've got a thing that's hanging down now. Yeah, that, yeah, that's all right. It's just a ding, little door. Right. Where is that one now? It's a Tazcam cover. Hey, I'll get it. <laughs> that's <laughs> No, the technical term for it is it's a thingy. Yeah, yeah. What's it's a thingy don't work. <laughs> ah, there you go. Ha! There you go, see. It's a good job you guys ain't depending on me for your life, innit? Yeah, <laughs> <Looking at me. laughs> yeah you're stuffed. That's nice. Sorry, lads, I forgot the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad. So we couldn't, we couldn't <laughs> use them anyway. You've got to pick a card and say, excuse me, lads, yeah, don't shoot true, at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We can't shoot you back. <laughs> <laughs> and if we do, 40 years' time, we'll get the charge. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's ridiculous, isn't it? It was practically that in Northern Ireland, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't shoot a petrol bomb. <laughs> well, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> Fourth, I'm getting the money. manic six-year-old, so they ain't bothered them, then they can be young kids. True, anything like that. Then, my he married a six-year-old and consummated the marriage when she was nine. And that's what they believe. It's, it's paedophilia. But he was very vain, that chap was, apparently, in the paper. He was in prison and he used to be very vain. And he'd watch these things in the office and he didn't even see them. Then he, he'd, have, he'd been there for a few weeks and he was having to cut his stomach, uh, lose weight to make him, you know, all vain and everything. Yeah. And, uh, if, it, if, it was, if it was getting worse then, Well, that Polish chef was his hero, wasn't he? Sorry? He, that Polish chef was a hero who pushed him out to the street. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going <clears> to... <throat> Count and then clap my hands to sync so I can sync this audio stuff up after. Three, two, one! Happy birthday to you! Good have fun with you, ain't we? You've got to get into here. <laughs> I'm surprised when you clap, we didn't all dive underneath the table. <laughs> oh, yeah.
I never thought of that. God, they did, they shot something when we were at the museum, didn't they? And then he sent oh, me through the scene. <laughs> and we went in the, um, they've got the, the place where you go in like it's... Um, uh, the, the, the mine? No, no Nick's was the one. The, like the, where they go when, um, the air raid shelter, that's what I'm thinking of. Air raid shelter. Where you shelter. go in the oh, city yeah. there and then they do the noise like the... Yeah, they've got like a simulator thing, you sit in... In like this room, and, and then you press this button, and like you can hear the bombers coming over, and then the bombs drop in, oh, and, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. fire engines with the bells where's ringing. Where's this? Stuff. At the regimental museum. museum. Oh, museum. Oh, museum. Oh, I never saw it. No, they're, 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 they're bringing more new that, stuff in all the time. New stuff. Yeah. Oh, but sorry. I remember such. I was, um, I was um, a kid when the war was on. I remember all the running to school with my gas mask and... So where did you listen. go for an air raid shelter? You can, <laughs> take, you can take it off now, Jess. Was <laughs> <laughs> it like a um, yeah. Anderson shelter? We didn't have one. We, we all sat under the stairs. My mother wouldn't... We had a dog, you see, and there was a big air raid shelter at the top of the road built on the patch. And they said, you can't bring your dog in. And my mother said, where are I'll go my dog goes. And I said, well, you can't. Sure so we all sat... You know, under the stairs, the alcove. Yeah. We put a blanket across there and a candle, and there was eight of us sitting. Oh, <laughs> and my dad worked all night and he used to run out in, in an air ride. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> and then run back to work. We still got an air ride shot in our, in our allotment. Oh, yeah. It? yeah, a brick one. You know, the, the, oh, a, wow. like a, for, for the local residents. Mm. It's one on the main road. On the main pen road. Have you got one? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Jack. I've yeah. seen the place where they dropped the bomb next to the orphanage. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. That field yeah, opposite. It, yeah, where it, it, no, it's on the same side as the yeah. orphanage and it's a big dip and there's trees around it. Yeah. That's where the bomb dropped. Oh, I didn't know. I remember that. Were there houses there when it dropped? Uh, no, piece, no. Of, piece of land. So just me. And uh, my dad said that would be after Fisher bearings, you know, because I was a bull bearing factory. Uh, I remember that. My mother was, uh, we had, because we was a big family, there was ten of us. She had a four bedroom house and an attic. Oh, yeah. And I, my, I can see my mother now was scrubbing the stairs. And it was during the daylight the bomb did. And it went off. And uh, I, my mother said, Oh, good God. And I said, What's the matter, Mum? And I said, Nothing. Nothing. And I just carried on. Yeah. And that dropped the bomb. And the guns on, um, I used to wear them regular on Bush Beer. They had the anti aircraft yeah. guns on there, you'd hear them going off and on. We'd all, we'd all be sattled all under the stairs. But my mother never showed any panic, never panicked. No other family, it's how you be all right, you'd be all right. You'd hear the planes go over, it's like, that's a door, yeah. <laughs> that's an uncle. <laughs> Were there any buildings destroyed in Wolves? Was there any buildings destroyed by bombs? Any. Buildings? Yeah, the next street was bombed. Jim had a bomb go well, through his... bomb through our house. Did you? No, yeah. big bomb. It was like an incendiary bomb. Because we lived opposite the power station in Commercial Road. Right. And that, they, the Germans knew where everything was, you know. And we, you know, they, they devastated Coventry, didn't they? Yeah. Flattened it, didn't they, Coventry? The only thing I can remember is they we had the railway running at the bottom of our garden and they set that on fire one night, all the railway. Down town? It was on fire. Down east town? Yeah. All, all, yeah. Ashbourne Road. Mm -hmm. the, bottom, the railway was all on fire. Then I remember Coventry. My dad said, oh, Brummagem's having it tonight. But it weren't, it was Coventry. You could see it from mm -hmm. east town. You could see Coventry lit up. Wow. They thought it was Brum, he said, oh, I mean, it's just Brum. Oh, was only a little babby in a cotton lid. Yeah. Yeah. I can remember things, you no, know. You, you don't appreciate was, it. I you wasn't there. I was 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 there. Oh, give it to them, they might not be here tomorrow. Where are we going now? Where are we going? I said, no, where? You've just seen it. They won't be here tomorrow. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm filming this by the way guys, so you just carry on talking 
It's brilliant. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> just, just reminisce with Helen oh, about. Okay, he I didn't do that bit where he said he wore a gas mask and I said you can take it off. Yeah, now. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. There's no issue. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, you carry on talking. Which leg? We'll get the it's so Which leg am I going to kick when he gets up? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's the left one. Now, as I was saying to you in the pub, if the sarcasm in the army, you know, if they're not sarcastic towards you, they don't like you. If they're no, nice here, then, you know. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> the more sarcastic yeah, they are, the Probably owe him some money or something. <laughs> I mean, he's the best like, bloke in the regiment, you was. He's oh, always well, been sarcastic. Oh. Too. <laughs> Never been anything else? Well, we've, we've got a full family full of sarcasm, haven't we? Oh, gosh. When yeah. my son used, my eldest son used to go to school and someone was sarcastic, he was like, that's nothing. You need to come home. Yeah. We've got really good teachers at home. It's just banter with the army, it's just good. So you're banter. It's anything beyond banter is. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 had a woman, I had a woman stand up for me because the bloke could turn around to me and was calling me Hoppy. And she said, well, that's not very nice. You know, he's lost his leg. And I said, well, it's all right. I said, that, you know, he likes me. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> this is a big nice. Have you nicknamed Stig? I mean, my name's Richard, Richard Clive, Richard Clive Owen. But when I went in the army and I said, what's your name? And I said, Owen. There was an American runner, wasn't there? Jesse Owen. Jesse Owen. And they said, oh, Jesse, and that has stuck yeah, ever since. Ever since. So did one Nobody Jesse's knows me not, as Richard. No, Jesse's not a very common name for no, your no, age, no. is it? No, no. no. It, 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 was, a, it was a bloke named Jimmy Presley. He said, oh, Jesse, and that just stuck, and it's gone on. Well, since 59, because when I knew you in 59. I mean, I went to school with him, and I was known as Dick Owen, or Richard Owen. He calls me Jess. And I went to school, we, we were classmates. So you three were at school together? Oh, no, yeah. just oh, Jim just and me. Right. Ken and I was in Of course, there. you're much younger, aren't you? That, that's the yeah. next <laughs> Ken and I was um, in the army together. I was a, a little bit before him. Did you serve in the same regiment? Were you in? Yeah. No, not Jim. Not he not was Jim. Jim long, long range, does it? Long range, no. Long range, no. I was called I was called Doctor Ori because when I was in Shoja I was the medic or well, my surname's Terry and so when they come Doc and then Doc Terry Doctor Ori but I'm <laughs> sure they were really talking about that cross-eyed lion probably so what, what did you two end up as then you know not really Jim is it something different oh no I'm Jim you're definitely Jim I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been Ken all the time. And then, and then when I left the regiment and joined the ordnance corps, that's when they turned on me. Did they? Because I became yeah. a yeah. sergeant major. Oh, oh no. <laughs> he turned on, he <laughs> wasn't a nice guy, he was put up a sergeant major. And that when you went to start shouting and... Well, you have to, not when to, you have, have to. to. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to swear to anymore, no, no. No, I swear. No, you're not allowed no, to swear on the parade. No, nowadays, no, nowadays, apparently, <coughs> from we hear through the depots and whatnot, you're not allowed to swear. Did you swear on the programme, though? <laughs> Many a time. Like a trooper. Many a time. Yeah. I had, 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 Stop shouting those poor men, oh, no, you, poor you little man. devil, you. But more worse than that, than that yes. you know. I just turned, I said, oh, no, not you, Pear. Walking down the back of the square, the square say, there, what there. Yeah. I, was a, I was a teddy boy in my youth, and I've uh, got a lovely sky blue suit, black velvet collar, <laughs> my thick crepe sole, oh. blue suede shoes. Went to... Uh, Recruited, went went in, and the sergeant major said, "That's the last time you'll see you in that city. Don't <laughs> wear that again." And I never did. <laughs> did never you? Did. Make... <laughs> I had to buy another suit. What made you go into the army? Sorry. What made you go into the army? I was called up. Oh, you were. I was called up, and then I signed on. Because it was about fifteen shilling for the national service, and it was three guineas if you signed on. Yeah. Well, I'd had, I'd had a job before I went in. I was earning more money, and my dad, at the age of 17, was working three shifts in a rolling mill, which was hard, hard work, but I got good money. 
So 15 shilling might any good to me. <laughs> What's that, 75 pence? Still like that nowadays, eh? And I signed on with... Where and I enjoyed yours? it and I signed on again after I kept... I, I, so how old were you when you, when you signed up? 18. I was 18. I was but it was before school. you'd got your yeah. conscription papers. Yeah. Well, you had no choice. You've got to go in yeah. one way or the other. And I wanted, I wanted to be a driver. And they asked you, and I said, I'd be, I said, well, we can't guarantee that. But if you sign on, we, we can guarantee it. So I signed on to be a driver. And then... That's it. And did, but, they, did you become a driver? Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. On the bike? I signed on because... Um, I wanted to go with, the, I've got a, a relation who'd come through the ranks in the South Staffordshire Regiment. Oh. Um, he joined the army as a young boy, 14 in those days, before the First World War. And uh, when I was called up, he said, try and get in the South Staffords. Try and get in the South Staffords. He said, oh, you'll be all right. Well, they said, where do you want to go? And I said, they said, we can't guarantee it. Um, you know, but uh, if you want to sign on, so I said, well, I thought about it. But then I did, I, you know, I was called up and I signed on to make sure I got in the South Staffords. And where did uh, you go for your square bashing? Where did you go for that? You know, where the barracks was, where the... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you were the, there, were you? Yeah. Okay. That was our regimental... Oh, our right. memorials are in there. It's really, yeah, really it's interesting that, yeah. if you can get in there. But it's altered so much. But there's still... One or two blocks, you know, they've been up before the First World War, you know. The barracks was going, I, I don't know how long it's been there, 18-something yeah, or other. Yeah. Yeah. I know from 1959 when I, when I first got there. Yeah. It was 1957 when I got there. We had to give our notice, you know, else you stopped on for the next three, three years. Because once you did 22 years with a three year option. 22 with a three year option. But, yeah, yeah. But, you, yeah. but you once you waived your three year option, you, you went straight on to six year option. And that's why I wouldn't <coughs> do it again on the way. That and other business going on. We, we don't want to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you, you both signed up as well, did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, National Service had finished. Had National Service finished. Tony, no, no, Tony no. was in as a boy. Mm. Well, Tony was a boy, so okay. yeah. I left, I left school and I got, I got a job in a factory. It's called Turner's Manufacturing, just gear cutting and stuff. I got really bored, stuck there, you know, from eight till five. I looked for it. So I went to the army information. They told me all about it. I went home. I said to me, "Can I join the army?" No. And I said, "Okay, thank you very much." And I went in as a boy soldier. At a place called Tom Fanon in uh, Wales. And then I went straight to the regiment. I didn't, I didn't touch which for the real. I, I didn't, I didn't know you could, you could go in at 16, I bet you had to No, boy soldier. No, boy soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when you, when you come 15, to 17, when I 17 you go and join the regiment. Yeah. Wow. And I joined them down there in 1964, when they just come back from Kenya. I was just training NCL for the boy soldiers, when they went. There were drummer boys and band boys at the barracks, uh, you know, from 15, when they were 17 and all. They went on to man service then. They joined the battalion. And, uh... So was was being a boy soldier exactly the same as being a man soldier? It was. You were treated exactly the same. Okay. You wore a different train. uniform. They wore a uniform from the 1914-18 war oh, with right. the collar all fashioned up here, and, oh, and the, you know, whereas uh, the others, you wore battle dress, you know, and the collar and top. But the boy soldiers used to wear this uh, First World War uniform. Yeah. So when did you go out to Northern Ireland first? Was that the first place you, you were posted out to? No, no. Um, Whitney, Whitney was British Honduras, uh, Cyprus. Then Northern Ireland started up. So then we went over there for the first month, for the four months. And then the second tour, then this happened. So... <laughs> And were you, when, how long did it take you to get well again so that you could... Well, apparently I was, Fortnite. I was so good. <laughs> now they said I was so good. <laughs> they said they'd never seen anybody so fast on the leg. Even the physiotherapist kept telling me to sit down, which is unusual for a physiotherapist. But I got back to the regiment. I want to get back to the regiment, you see. So when I, when I first went in there, the doctors come around and said, right, who's on my list? 
And I said, oh, my, me, I'm on your list. I'll be out in about 30 days. And they said, OK. And then another doctor came in. Who was on my list? I said the same to him. 30 days later, I went to Sid Sartre and he says, how the hell did you do this? You should still be in. Because <laughs> all the doctors put me down for 30 days. So. And then I've learned how to walk on the leg and back to the regiment as a signals instructor. So I didn't have to march anywhere. But yeah. I hopped across the parade ground every so often. Yeah, but that was a joke. You can laugh if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you sure? <laughs> Shall I tell the other jokes? Shall I tell the other one? He had blonde hair and he said he's fat. Oh, no, really? I did, yeah. First of all, I saw him <laughs> on Facebook prior to when I was in the army. I saw him in 64 when he joined us in Kenya. Nice, young, slim, and everything, you know, yeah, yeah. That's how I remembered him. The next time I saw him, oh, many years later, <laughs> after I'd finished my service with the order school, I saw him there and thought, could go right into him. Grown up. Unbeknown to me at the time that he lost half his leg, I thought he'd still the same lad. So all that good he lost living. a bit of it. It's all that good living, isn't it? Uh, exactly. Yeah. But I was telling everybody that when I left the army, I was going to be a policeman. But I was a foot short. So. <laughs> there you go, Sid. I play cricket. He wouldn't have had a friend. He wouldn't have had a friend. If it have been a... I play cricket. Not in, not in the Staffords, any of them. Now the short leg or stumps. <laughs> <laughs> Another one I can't tell you. <laughs> these, are, these are the humans, you know. This is, See, I have to be honest, because when you get back yeah, to the yeah. regiment, we had, we had an Irish bloke who was in the staff. It's uh, Paddy. Paddy Laffin. Paddy Laffin. Laffin. So anyway, they, his wife was a bit funny, you see, because I'd just come back from Ireland after losing my leg. And she thought, I'm going to blame her because she's Irish and he's Irish and he's going to be. So I thought, well, the only way to do it is break the ice because she was very friendly with my wife. So I made these jokes up, and as soon as they break the ice, that's it, you know, they know he's not yeah. going to pick on them. You're like a teenager you say? that, you can't put it down. <laughs> what did you say to her? What, who? Paddy Laffin's missus. If I, if I thought it was your fault, I'd have shot you. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. You're 59. That face there, could you recognise it? With the very back. Not without my glasses on, I can't. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's in my jacket. I'm old now. So oh, put your glasses on. It's, it's in the other room. What are you like? Waste of time. Who is it? Tell me it's in the other room. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. You can put a thing on Johnny Bush on the top of Facebook. Yeah. And, um, and Ken said, uh, thank you, old man. Uh, yeah. Tony is the youngest of a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> But I have put the leg, I took a photo of my artificial leg on the bed, <laughs> and I've put on the top of it, the leg end, which is Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Ken, was there still, was there was conscript, conscription when you... Yes. And so, were you waiting, or did you sign up? No, no. I'd, 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 uh, I'd, lost, <coughs> I'd lost my parents, I was the only the one left in the family, all the rest of married and everything else. So, I decided to speak to, to me. On. <laughs> wouldn't speak to me, no. So I went, I went and signed on, and I think it was uh, the second week I was there at Whittington, I received a brown envelope from a sister, and it's been all the papers. Oh, wow. I took it inside, and he said, forget that, son. <laughs> You're a regular. Oh, another. Yeah. <laughs> that was it, yeah. If you'd, if you'd gone to sign up, if you'd gone in, and you'd already got your conscription paper, then you couldn't become a regular, because you'd already got those papers. No, oh, oh, so I, you, I just... I, I honestly don't know about that. All I know is that I enlisted, I volunteered to enlist it. And then a few <coughs> weeks later, I came through the, to my sister's house, where I was living at the time. She sent it to me, but I was already in the yeah, uniform. Yeah. When yeah. I first met Ken, you, you don't do it two years, you do that three years. We was in the back of, a, back of a lorry, and we were going up to Scotland uh, <laughs> oh, to, oh, 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 on a range. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said, oh, anybody heard that song? He said, what song's that, Ken? He said, I don't know. He said, well, he's got a smashing voice. He said, a really bossy voice. He said, uh, it's something. He'll, he'll have to go. go. He'll have to yeah. go. What's the other words, Ken? He said, I don't know. So we all sat there singing, he'll have to go. He'll have <laughs> to go. <laughs> he'll have oh, to go. All the way to right Scotland. <laughs> We never found the rest of the bird, did we? <laughs> yeah, that's probably that. Well, 
and then it started. Um, Dick Smith knows my father. Yeah. Father you ever heard knows of? Dick Smith. Dick Smith knows my father. My father knows Dick Smith. It Dick just Smith on. knows my father. My father knows Dick Smith. Is that it? Dick That's Smith. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another one, otherwise it's got. Oh my god. And then there's another one. Ooh, he was saying goodbye to his horse, yeah. saying goodbye to his horse, and as he was saying goodbye to his horse, he was saying goodbye to his horse, goodbye horse, goodbye horse, <laughs> goodbye horse. <laughs> goodbye horse. <laughs> but this, these go on for an hour, an hour and a half. You can then it is There's one tired, <laughs> there's one tired somebody else and take it that's that, that's the army again, you know. It's yeah. the comradeship. And... Why are you going to Scotland? Oh, uh, to get rid of a lot of ammunition, I reckon. Yeah, the <laughs> ranges. Oh, we were going to on mountain ranges. Um, it was. We had jets flying over and uh, pretending to come in and swoop, and you know, as if he was in the battle. Yeah. It was on a big open range, and we got live ammunition and firing. The phosphorus grenades, yeah. I remember we went to um, we went to church parade <laughs> in a little village, Carnoustie. Yeah, yeah. So and one little church, and I said, Battalion is all going on church parade, so we all had to go into church. And the first hymn was on the Christian soldiers. On wood. And everybody was standing <laughs> and the vicar was, oh, he'd yes. never seen anything like it. He said, oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you ever seen that film, Our Water Lovely Walk? Yeah. There's somewhere in the middle of that, there's um, a church parade. And they're all singing, and then you get that Welsh voice in the background. And they're completely different words. That is what it's like, you know. It's, <laughs> it sounds good. But if you listen carefully, you can hear different words, in the, in, and he's got a beautiful voice, that Welsh word. Like. Yeah. I want a bad singer till tunes come out. Once yeah, yeah. as soon as they make music, you know, that is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now, good after that. Yeah. 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 So, how, how old were you when you were posted abroad? How, many, how long had you been in the army before you were sent? <laughs> How long was in the army? I'm going to ask someone with their ears in, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, well, the first time we went to Britain. How old were you? <laughs> How long had you been in the army before you were sent abroad? Oh. About <laughs> <laughs> 18, 19. Yes, yeah. Or yeah. Like we had an emergency to, uh, to Kenya. Oh, right. We went to Kenya first. But Six months we were living under canvas, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. They'd scattered the battalion all over Kenya, and uh, Kenya, we used to call it then, it's mm -hmm. Kenya now. It was Kenya then. Yeah. Um, and we, we were all stationed on different farms. The white farmers, they owned all the land. Mm. And uh, the Mau Mau had finished, but it had started to come up again. They was calling themselves the Land Freedom Army. So we went, the battalion was spread all over, um, all over Kenya. Mostly. And we lived, in, we lived in, in tents, that's all we had. We had no barracks or anything, and we had all compound rations, you know, tin this and pom. I don't know whether you know what pom is. Dried potatoes potato. with water. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. We, that's, nice. That's what we had. And, and the gravy was uh, celery soup powder. And they'd pour that on, and then oh. it'd just turn like milk. I thought it was the super corn beef. We lived on that, didn't we, for six yeah. months? Mm -hmm. We'd never had a bath. We'd never had. We'd, we'd, we were just going around trying to make showers up for people with biscuit tins and an old pipe if we could get some water, and that's how we lived. But the next time we went, we had a proper barracks, didn't we? I was just about to say, whilst there, we didn't become the, uh, the starving Staffords or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the only yeah. Staffords. Yeah. Somebody complained about the food we was having and they, uh, it was in the Express and Star at Wolverhampton and oh. the hungry Staffords and they sent somebody out and they took them to Mombasa, which is right on the coast, a little island. They took them there, beautiful blue sea and glass-bottom boats 
And I said, this is how we live. You'd never see the sea. You'd never see it. And, uh, and the ex-president star said, oh, no, I can't understand why they're calling themselves the young staffers. You oh. <laughs> <laughs> never had anything, did you? No, no, rubbish, no. Yeah. And the first place I went you to... You went to hungry. Really. The first place I went to was British Honduras. I was 17, 18. And uh, it was all right for the first couple of months. I mean, you're in the jungle and stuff, training. And then all of a sudden there was a gossip that the Guatemalans were going to come and take over British Honduras. So the British and Jewish people started rioting against us because they thought we were going to dump them and let the Guatemalans move in. So then we started having riots on the street. I was stabbed once with an ice pick on the street, just walking down. I thought he'd just punch me, but he hit me in the side with the ice pick. And then uh, we cleared the streets and we had to pick people up and take them to the big stadium. And they were held at the stadium until they'd been interviewed and stuff. And we had one, he was a, he was a police guard, and he had a slip. And it was signed by the washerwoman of the governor. She does his washing, and he'd get this slip, and she signed it for him. So he thought he could walk the street with the washerwoman slip on. He'd not be arrested. He was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> when we were in Kenya, I don't know whether you've heard of, ever heard of Idi Amin. Oh, yeah. Well, he was a regimental sergeant major in the King's African Rifles when we were there. And he was the heavyweight champion of East Africa, boxing. And our heavyweight fought him and knocked him out in the first round. And uh, that was Johnny John Spray. Spray. Yeah. Spray. He just, a short shot left him. Yeah. And he went out like a light, uh, Eddie Army. I'd, I think he didn't want to fight. I think he threw the um, gun to anger mixing it with him. Yeah, I mean, it was a big thing, wasn't he? Uh, I saw him. They, uh, they had a regimental thing, and uh, they killed a, a cow. Do you remember when they tied the, the bull up? Yeah. And then they all yeah. run up the spears and killed it, and before he knew where he was, it was skinned and cut up and everything. It was just, oh, I've never seen such a gory mess in all my life. That's how it was. Did any of you get in? Because when we were talking to um, Cyril, he'd been put on. Um, Junkers. He'd been in trouble for being late, basically. Restricted privileges. That's the one. And when have you been naughty? Yeah, I was in thrown in jail. In British Honduras. But we were let off for the night. I mean, three nights we've been out picking people up. So they said, right, you can go back to the camp, have a night off. We went back to the camp. And we said, we'll go to the bar just down the road. Well, that was absolutely jam-packed, so we went to the bar further down the road. What we didn't realise, that bar further down the road was in the area where you're not supposed to be. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. So we were sitting there drinking, and someone made you come along back from the town, seeing us, said, get in the wagon. He says, go and have a drink. Get in the wagon. I said, OK. Went back to the camp, and he threw us in jail, and we got a day's pay. Fine the next day for being out of bounds. We went, it was out in uh, Nairobi. And uh, he said, all on uh, drinking, and he'd come. And that's the, 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 the uh, Kahawa camp yeah, was 15, 15 miles, miles from Nairobi. Yeah. So um, he said, Have we got enough? There was three of us. Have we got enough money to get a taxi? And we just about, we just about had got enough money to get, in, to get a taxi. So we called a taxi, and uh, we sort of staggered to it. But what they did, there was three of us sitting on the back seat and another bloke jumped in the front. And I thought we got three drunken soldiers. They took us to an outer bound area, pulled onto this garage round the back, and uh, we knew what was going to happen. I was going to try and what they call rollers, you know, robbers. We got them, we then got the taxi fare in here. We wouldn't have got a lot, but um, he finished up with a right ball. We, uh, we wrecked the taxi, <laughs> we got arrested, and I wouldn't give them my name, I said, don't give them your name. The, the inspector was a Indian, Sikh, and the cop was, was all African, and I ain't kidding you, there, there wasn't one under six foot, six foot, six foot seven, that was massive blows. And uh, he said, what's your name? And I said, don't tell him, I said, we want the military police here. They were too private, and I was a corporal, so there was... Taking some notice of me, I don't know what. I said, we don't, don't give them your name. I said, we want the military police here. We're in out-of-bounds area. 
And uh, he said, this uh, big black African cop said, the inspector wants your name, so he's not going to have it. And he, he put his hand, he grabbed me, and he, his, his hand was on the on the desk, and he grabbed me with one hand, and there was a big glass ashtray. And I picked the ashtray and smashed it on his hand, and I went, he lifted me up. I went, fine. <laughs> I let us go in the finish. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't let that. I said, "Well, don't get in any more taxis. We have to walk back the fourteen mile to Kahawa." It was funny that. But about six months later, a young recruit who had gone out there, he did the same thing. Got in a taxi. Two blokes got in. I stripped him naked, beat him to death. They got. Uh, they got sentenced to 20, 20 years, but be, um, Keener had become then independent, and he did about four months, didn't he? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, that's all he got, and he killed the young lad. I killed the young lad. Beat him to death, didn't I? Just stripped him everything, didn't I? That's when, basically, the video went down to the road. Oh, they went down to North Rugby and they wrecked it. They wrecked it. They wrecked it. Every taxi was turned yeah, up so picking it up. And they wrecked it. was a prostitute who had got him, encouraged him to go in the taxi. Yeah. And um, they beat all the prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd come home then. I didn't see that. I'd you missed that, you did. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd got the mark. Were you sat there then, Kevin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there with my wife. A brand new daughter as well. Yeah. Oh, were you? You were all out there, were you? Yeah. I didn't. I, I was reading something at the um, the regiment museum, which was a much earlier, was a much earlier war. But the, the wives were out in France and Spain with the with some of the. Um, <coughs> I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's it's showing her carrying her husband home because he's exhausted or whatever. But um, that the wives were out there as well. I didn't mm -hmm. realise that the wives mm -hmm. could go. Well, the wives came. Well, my wife. We got married in sixty uh, two. Oh, June June sixty two. I left there in August '62 by the troop ship out to Kenya, and then she joined us in joined me in October. We were living in the hotel, Spread Eagle Hotel, in, in uh, just outside Nairobi. Kenya's out in Cyprus when they uh, um, Turkey, when the Turks invaded and uh, yeah, was just collecting dead bodies up and everything. Was you there? Oh, well, so, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just keep them apart. Yeah, you could see the Turks coming from the mountains, coming down that way. They advanced towards us. Jim and I had a nice little pulse in a grill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was a nice in a grill, yeah. But they, they, they come advanced towards us. It was rough when all them scousers come back. But a fort now it's all in there. We had a, an ultimatum come through from the head. Turkish army. If you don't leave by midnight, they're coming right through because they wanted the airport behind us. Would anybody, anybody like a cup of tea? Cup of coffee? Up and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Time for me. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't come through the two around. We've got time for a cup of tea. Yeah, if you want to take a break. Yeah. Two, one, one, say it again. Where were we? That is a question. Are you sure you want me as a friend? <laughs> is that your phone? <laughs> is that your phone, Jeff? Not now. It's stopped now. It was, I think your phone was ringing. Yeah, it, it was. won't have heard a phone ringing. It won't. <laughs> the your no, phone door. No, it was a yeah, phone. It was definitely a phone. There you go, Jess, I've sorted you now. So now I can go all through your old posts and have a look at what it was you, you've done and you've been doing. That's you haven't done it? No. Yeah, I've done it, yeah. Oh, well. That's the reason I want to know, it's just so I can nose you or through your profile. <laughs> <laughs> you won't even know how to get on to you anyway. Helen Stalker, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to now? Dinner. 
We've got a joint friend. You know, Paige. Told Jizowski. you everything I know. Paige Jizowski. 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 She's one of your friends. Oh, she's my um, how can I place this? Um, my nephew's daughter. Oh right, okay. So step whatever, yeah. whatever the situation was, you know. She's yeah. lovely, Jane. But she she uh, she married obviously Jajowski. Yeah, Luke. Yeah. They're a good couple. They're really, they're really, really nice. nice. Yeah, really nice. I've known They're not like amongst all this lot because I. I'm Do you not want them? I don't, I, I don't know if you know them. I say, you, you're not in there. No, right? no, no, I've done it now. I've sorted it. I've got it. Oh, I've done it. I've just got 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 I'm going to go through mine as well. I've got about 147. Yeah, I'll take it all that. Right, what do you want me to ask? Are we, are we focusing on Jim, are we? Yeah, we get, because he's been very quiet. Because Jim's been the quietest one, so we could do with yeah, a, 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 a story. Dispatch Give us your or you nice dispatch story rider. in the forces. <laughs> All for you. What, what did you go into first? Because you said you were in artillery. Yes. So did you go straight into that after you'd done your square bashing? You do you, you, you do your square bashing in the artillery as well. Oh, do you? Yeah. Did you choose to go into artillery then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? Because I wanted to be a driver. And that's where... That's the only one who done me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where where were you based? Where yeah. did you go first? In North Wales, Kimmel Park, Bottle Wigan. And that's where you did your training or when you were based? I stayed there, okay. yes. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what were you driving? What? Were you driving the big vehicles? Well, I don't know a lot about this. So. Well, the warehouse station was a it was a training camp for drive. It was a driving school, and um, I I I I signed on in fifty uh, fifty six and went in, and then early early nineteen fifty seven, um, we we given a, a weekend's pass, and I took a, a Scotch home with me. Scotch got it home with me, and when I got home, my mother said, um, "Your dad's not very well." He had to come home from work, but, and then the sister said, "I'm going now," and he went to play, and he died. So when I, I went back, I tried to get a compassionate discharge, and then finished my training, and they put waited for the discharge to put me in holdings troop. And then uh, the the adjutant sent me for me one day, and he said, "I've got some bad news." He said, um, "We can't, you can't have a discharge." He said, "But I know your situation because mother was in the health as well." If I could help with the uh, uh, posting, and I said I'd like it to you, so I stayed in, in Wales, at the Kimmel Park, and that, that was an old HQ. We used to do all the driving, you know, for keeping the camp going, and that was how we started and stayed there. It was a scary. And then they had, they had, the, motor, they had the Royal Artillery motor, Motorbike Display Team there, and I joined that for two years. And we used to go around all the carnivals and in the summer, and that, it was all right. Fantastic. Mm. And, that, and you did that for two years, just travelling around doing. No, you you did you did you did training in your spare time, and then when there was any carnivals or whatever, we, we used to go and do it, you know, and then come back and do our normal jobs. And the, and did the, you ever fire a gun? I never saw the gun. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't we can't say it's an unmade. So you never fired a gun. <laughs> I've been thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a, a chap who comes, he's in the Royal Horse Artillery, but he never saw yes, a horse. Yes, yeah. <laughs> 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 Mammy, the one who's met Mammy, he was in the Royal Horse Artillery. Yeah. I don't think he ever saw a horse. No, because it was, me he was he mechanised, you see. It mechanised. It was just the traditional name. Oh, but it's still it's going. Like but it, they, they've oh. still got the they've still got the, uh, the guns, Matt, and they it's called the you know King's the Queen's Troop. The King's Troop. Yes. And that come on with the horses and yeah. they fire the guns. That's the Royal Horse Artillery. But you know, it's just a special group who do that. The rest on them are mechanised. Because they did actually have horses yeah, that, in that one, did they? Yeah. Proper horses. Yeah. Well, that's called yeah. the King's Troop. That is because of the, the Queen, the King, the, the King, he loved that and. When he died, his, his uh, daughter said that he was going to call the King's Troop. Oh, 
And it's still Oh, we'll never know that. Yeah. Mm. There's a mine underneath the mansion. Mm. I thought you meant they didn't know when it was at school. <laughs> <laughs> it was thrash, <laughs> continually <laughs> thrash. Yes, yes, we still had it. I was never there, I was never at school. Yeah, yeah. No, there wasn't anyone who was never at school. Either. Oh, no, no, oh dear, but wait. Do you, if, I'm, I'm saying that we were back where we were, do you, would you still have joined the army? Yeah. Was it a good thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. If I had that time again, I would do exactly the same thing. And I went mad because I was ready to discharge, so I didn't want to leave. Didn't enjoy everything in the army, and a lot of people I know and met. I wouldn't give them the time of day. But there were some, you know, some good comrades. You're not talking about these now, are you? No, no. Well, no, not, <laughs> not to the face. I'd tell you something different then. <laughs> but, um, no, not everybody. I hear you so much, oh, yeah, you're, you're a Stafford and we're all this. It wasn't, you know, I mean, I remember Mark Sergeant Majors, some of them just bullies and. And uh, that, you know, there was a lot of that in the army. Yeah. And I did meet a lot of good people. And, uh, you know, you stick, you stick with those. But uh, some of the people I've, I've met since I've been out, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them the time of day, you know. There's good and bad in them, what, in everything. I was going to say, every walk of yeah, life. It's the army's like changed so much from what I can gather from when we were in, well, definitely from when I was in. It's changed so much, it seems to be more uh, humanised, you know, it was mm. just a number, and that was it. Yeah. And they could call you whatever they wanted to call you. So do you think it's gone too far the other way? Is it too lenient? I don't know, they've done well if they went, when they went. When they <coughs> went into um, Iraq, I mean the battalion fought there. Yeah. Uh, when they went in, they distinguished themselves, you know, they, uh, they did it well, I believe. Yeah. Um, oh, they, they, they lost a couple of blokes, didn't they? Mm. Were they? Yes, but they it, it's a different, a different thing. I mean, when we were in Kenya, in peacetime, we lost ten. In peacetime? Yeah, we buried ten out there. I was, because Jamie's in the, in the sea cadets, and he's up there only little, but they've, they've got... There's not as much discipline to do with the way they behave when they're actually in doing what they're doing. Oh, right. And I, I find that quite hard, because I, I need him to be going in there with someone going, do that, and he does it, because he don't do that for me. So. <laughs> no, well, it's, it, it's a you know, different system altogether. Yeah. Um, the thing you'd be smart, I think, is the comradeship, isn't it? Yeah. You, know, um, you know, you meet some nice people. And how was it when you were demobbed? Did it was it because we see a lot of soldiers coming back and it, it's a bit of a shock to them, isn't it? Because mind you, some of them have been in the army for years. I and never years. settled. It took me ten years to settle mm. down. Never stood the job so, 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 longer than six months. Trying so, to convert to civilian way of life couldn't do it. It's very hard. Because and were you supported by when you came out? No, not no, very much. No, no. It's just buy and off you go. That's it. Yeah. The only support we have, basically, in, in my case, you know, is my wife. She, 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 even, even oh, three years, four years <coughs> after, after, after I come out, she said, you still miss the mess life, don't you? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you know. You've already all said sometimes, you do. But whereas us now, because we serve together, still friends. Yeah. Nice to see, it's well, been years since I saw him, and when I did meet up with him again, it was great. Going back on it's the same yeah, we suddenly yeah. get up. I took the chairman's job with the Regimental Association of All Blacks and Branch. Yeah. And Ken. <coughs> oh, so you haven't kept in touch all those years? You've met again? We've met yeah. again. But it's, 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 just like, it's just like you left. It's like 60 years, years since we were yeah, together. Oh, wow, when, when he left the regiment in 63. 63. Last I saw him for a fair, fair while. Yeah. Until about 30 years ago. Well, it's something that we yeah. should have. Soon as you got contacted then. And I never knew. <laughs> I think he's tried, so. tried to say, I owed him money or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know. I ignored him. I saw him lots of him when I just got him. <laughs> so, were you three married when you came out of the army? I was. Yeah, I got married too. Oh, no, no. no, I wasn't. And did that make 
make it harder or easier when you found out that you weren't married? It's hard to settle down. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I had a bad marriage. You got different friends in the army, I'm saying. I mean, it seems that they don't seem to be so good. I mean, it's in, if you was in trouble in the army, they sit for you, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, seriously, they'll smile at you and then stab you in the back as soon as you turn your back, don't you? Well, don't we, we, can't, you we can't get used to it. The same as... Um, I had a good friend. The same as we do in the army. Happy wife, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was... That finished me in the army. When, you know, when I was in the factory, we tried to do the same sort of bands like I did in the army, like I was saying, so I cast like these gas masks and that sort of stuff. You do that to one of them, that one bloke comes to me one week and says, you know, I went home crying, because what you said to me. <laughs> I said I was joking, it, it, it's banter in the army, you think nothing of it. He must probably give you something back, if I say so much, he'll give it them back, yeah. and I'll expect it. But he said he went home crying, so it was very hard for me to think about what I was going to say next. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a lot of strength. It's a lot of strength. Snowflake, only one word, snowflake. Cry, you know. Don't do this, no, no, don't do no, no, this. All the same, but it's a different situation now, and the world's, the world's changed so much. I mean, we, you never thought of having a choice. You, you knew, as they say, you were going to be called up. You knew you couldn't get out of that unless it was medical, or perhaps it was a Jehovah's Witness or something like that, that you excused it. Well, they don't kill, do they? They don't believe. Well, I can't imagine that you wanted to kill, really. Well, if you did. <laughs> Maybe you will. I wanted to get in, you know, when, we, when they invaded um, uh, Egypt uh, for the Six Day War. I wanted to oh, get there, you know, let's get. Uh, but, you know, you can't say that to. A, I know the Jehovah's Witnesses have got a bad name, but I found them to be. I couldn't argue with them. But every time I tried to argue with them, they'd turn to the Bible and they'd say, do you believe in God? Yes. Uh, would God tell you lies? No. So there it is, both in the Bible. So, and that's, and that's what I stick with, you know, I'll stick with that. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, I said, I'm not good enough to be, even call myself a Christian. I don't call myself a Christian because I would kill. I struggle with Jehovah's Witnesses because they turn down blood products. Mm. And my, yeah. my son is a haemophiliac, mm. so he has to have, well it isn't blood products now, it, it's simulated, you know, yeah. synthetic, yeah. but it used to be blood products. Yeah. And um, I just don't know how you can question that with a condition. The way right they question that is, um, it, it says in the Bible, you shall not consume blood, that's why that's slaughter and hang it up and drain the blood. And they said, that's, that's God's instruction. If you believe in God, you, you can't go against him. He's told you not to consume blood, take it in, so they won't be injected with it or anything. Yeah. And uh, in a way, uh, that, that, that's being admired because there's people who are Jehovah's Witnesses in the same position as your son and they have to watch but the, the same, and it must be terrible for them. Um, oh, no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that the Jehovah's no, Witnesses no, no, no. are right, but, uh, you know, you can go... I can pass a Jehovah's Witness in the street, and I know he's not going to whip me over the head or anything, but I can't say that about a Catholic, a Protestant, <laughs> a Methodist. I don't know who. Anyway. So so the one that's a war, the one that, that refused. I don't have to talk about religion and politics. That's no, it's true. It's true. true. Yeah. That, that's what most of the next block this is, is because you talked about religion <laughs> or politics. Um, so do you... Shall we talk about Brexit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's not. What else do you want, mate? Um, Trash out with... I think, think of the army, army today. Would, would you guys join the army as it is today? I know you said you'd go back in, but I presume you mean you'd go back in if it was how it was. How do you feel about the army, or the armed forces in general? How do you feel about them today? And how, and how, how soldiers are generally treated? The, the way they've destroyed it now, I mean, they have like 20,000 soldiers and you've got soldiers going on the streets now yes. because they can't find somewhere to live or work. So, you know, going back into the army, it's, it'd be a godsend to some of them. 
Well, it's actually, it's a different, different world in, in the country is a whole different thing now because when I was in, you could wear your uniform, if you lift at home, now if you wear the uniform, there's people out there who can hear them now. So you, you're not allowed to do that. You felt free and you felt safe. Yeah. Now it's a different thing, you know. Um, and how do you uh, feel about the country, how the way the country treats you, the Americans? <coughs> <laughs> they don't care, do they? I mean, the wars are finished, they don't need it. If there's ever another war, that would be needed. Um, we we couldn't fight them, we couldn't. We, 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 we say, oh yeah, you know, we're all soldiers, we do this and we do that. We can't do this, we couldn't do it. We couldn't. I, I, I picked up, I got a photograph and someone said, here, yeah, he's an SLR rifle, and I said, well, I love these things when they came out, because I had the old 303 and Red. 
<laughs> they were drinking when I went out, but they were in. And I thought, I've been hit. Anyway, I didn't, the, the, it blacked out, I almost blacked out then, because when I've gone to, I've gone past the ferries. I've crawled literally crawled around it, and there's holes, they told me, when my elbows are literally gone like that, and I've crawled around the ferries. Anyway, the, they came back with the ambulance and everything, well, an arm ambulance. And they found out that I've ripped all the car from the side to the right leg. The whole lot had been ripped out completely. And I had a big gash in my leg. Like. So I was trying to save for about 10 days. And I got hemorrhoid. And the doctor comes and says, um, this is the only thing I'm afraid. The doctor came in the morning and says, I'm sorry, you but you've got to take the leg off below the knee. Because you've got no muscle to wrap around the bone. I said, fine, yeah, fair enough. And then he came back in the afternoon and he said, I'm sorry to tell you, he says, but... Um, you can't do it below the knee, you haven't got enough muscle. So we've got to take it above the knee because you've got more muscle. And I said, you carry on, Doc, you'll be cutting off a bit. Now that's the only thing, it is dark humour. That's what it's like in the army. You expect to die. So as far as I'm concerned, I should have died in 1974. So every day now is a bonus. While all that was going on, and you were saying, I'm sorry about this, and Tony was thinking, I'm going to be the guard commander tonight. I was casted in this one and me, lucky soldiers. Yes, I never saw anything like this. I was so pleased on this one all the time. Yeah, yeah. And me, I got relations by the side of the board. You wouldn't mind if you knew the enemy, but you never know the enemy. I was just saying, look at the world, I was very small. Wait, Tom, I didn't admit I didn't want to go shopping in the front, but don't put that on the camera. You walk along the street, mind your own business, and this lad, we know, he's well known, the little bleeder, but he was coming past and he said, You have red bastards, and I thought it was a compliment because I couldn't understand the word he said. And then he took a swipe, and then he started to find like that, he calls him in the throat. He went to the of the window, and his mate was with him. And so, so I grabbed his mask and said, what are you there for? What are you there for? I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I've got away with murder. I'm murdered. And I killed the dog. I'm going to kill the dog. It's not the end of that. I have to pay 25 pounds for that. I killed the dog. It's all back and we come back to you. But did you have to pay a few shows? Well, you've got to be a child, you know, see. The better we get, isn't they, the uniforms and and all that. I mean, we used to shave our battle dress to try and make it look like Gabardine. Because if you just like an horse monkey, it was made of sandstorm. Yeah, and we used to do all sorts of things, just put soap inside the sea. I've still got to do it now, I've sewn it, these have been sewn in creases. If you could, if you could get away with it, you've sewn creases in your back of your head. Oh, you've got to do it all to make them get out of the way. You put up your head by the leg down to the end of a bullet, and you would sew that into a bag, and then that would make you... Yeah, you can sew it back off your gaiters probably. Unfortunately, to, to, to leave or sleep with the window at the back, 
that I get the stick and say, that is ridiculous, and I get, you get the stick and say, if you can catch it, you'll be all right. And then she'll be going to run on the stairs. <laughs> and it's all you scattered everywhere. I don't know anything to do. I, I've got three days jackets, and I'm not having any last four numbers on the ground sheet. And they're going to give me three days to confine to Paris. And, and you have to report to the guard room three times a day and the jewels. And, and then on Saturday, you have to have all your kit on there and your vest up and you were inspected and then I say, and then I charge you again and you get another three days. Yeah. 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 And I'm talking to you just to find out who Was there like a black marketing kit? Like, because from what I understand, if you haven't got. A certain item of kit, if you've lost it or whatever. You've been somebody else. Yeah, you've been somebody else. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had, I had, it's a standard procedure. You lose something, you pinch it. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll pinch someone else. So we had a chat for a while, and actually, you've got a stall on his family book, a stall on the market. Um, and he's a little bit in demand. And he says, yes, can I be a shop and tell him? Yeah, and so, so we went to the other wash. And then she said, Oh, I'll do it. I'll go and have kit in. And I said, Oh, okay, I'm just washing the hands. And then it was some months after the boat name, Angley. I can't remember his name. Uh, Angley, his name was. She said, Someone has pinched my breast for eight years. Gas mask. I said, Well, I said, Well, I'm going to have to go and get a gas mask. This is why we could use my salt and tell the pinch sheets, put it in my locker. <laughs> and he said, that's mine. <laughs> and I said, and I said, and I look at you. He said, and I 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 I don't know what you used to say to me, you'll be naked within three months when you're going to go and you push it out of the sea and you that there. And that's, that's right, that's what happened. When I went into training, training there was a bloke called Freddie Heap. Come from all around with him again. And then he worked in the uh, ordinary room. And he slept in the next bed to me. And I used to send some washing to the laundry and take some home. So I'd always got to clean stuff. And then his sister, who, who was, she used to stop the town and help me mom, uh, said, um, who's uh, F E? I said, Freddie Heap, do you know him? I said, I should do it, but he's watching it. He was close. I said, I'm not here. 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 I said, i John McCall, bless his soul. Uh, he came and he used to be the corporal in charge of the office mess. Uh, <laughs> we were going through the night and then some corporal to me and said, We're running out of booze. We've got no booze, but we had a big barrel of beer and then we were running out of booze. John said, Come with me, Tom. And he said, We're going to his car, we're going back to the camp. So the back of the mess. He went in, he was coming out with crates of boots and put them in his car, a big barrel of beer, put it in his car, and we went back to the party. And I said to him, John, you're going to get into trouble for this. He says, no. He said, these lieutenants and stuff, he said, they have a drink at night time. They drink so much, they don't know what the hell's going on. So I say to him, can you sign this shitty, please? They used to sign it. And he said, we used to just run it off like that. So all the booze there was free. <laughs> That's what happened. The Google calls, you actually end Google calls, you know, what it, what it stood for. And one of the things... My, my father was in the First World War and in, in for some time after. And uh, he used to water you because he was on horseback and water your horses and all that. But he learned me all the, um, the words, what soldiers had put to different calls. Officers' mess calls, um, officers' mess call was. 
officers' wives get puddings and pies. Soldiers' wives get skizzies. That was officers' mess. And and then the fire call. There's a fire. There's a fire. There's a fire. There's a fire. Put the bugger out. Put the bugger out. Da 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 da. da. You've heard all these in the in the last post. All these tunes come together. But they, the soldiers have made uh, words, words up to it. And sick parade was six to four, eight to four, he'll never go sick no more. The <laughs> bug is dead. You know. <laughs> that, that, and that's how you learn the the bugle calls. And I, I, that's how I learned when, when he took that much. I well, that's all my soldiers said, How are you now? Because my old man told me to oh, yes. put the words to it, you know. Was it hard when you first get in to conform to do to have to do all this? Yeah. Everything has to be proper and I mean I I'm just take a break just for one second. Oh, it's that time to think. Yeah. He's hopeless, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's got one job, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a good recharge of Where's he going? <laughs> <laughs> one job the man's got. Well, your next door neighbour's got the hugest cat I've ever seen. It's like a bloody panther next door, that oh, grey and white cat. Oh, yeah. I just, it was in the, <laughs> their sofa's got a bit where it lays, mm. I saw, and it's just gone down there. It looked like it could take I've got out. two cats. Because um, I used to have, put this fence up, it's not finished yet. It was all the uh, edge, and I used to have the badgers come through, dig the lawn up, and then the foxes. Didn't mind them, I'd feed, I'd feed them and that, you know. But they used to go on to his lawn then, and he didn't, you know, so I put the fence up and saves a lot of lawn. One job, Andrews. No, I just spoke that much. I filled the card. I think he wants us to show up. Do you want to go home now? Did you go in the army because your dad went in the army? Did, that did I? I know you're going to be conscripted, but do you think you would have gone into the army because your dad was in? Um, I was going to go in at uh, 15, and uh, my dad said, you ain't going to like it, and if you don't like it, you must stop in there, because you've got to sign on for 21 years. And he says... 21 years? Yeah. We should yeah. do a quick clap again. Three, two, one! And again, here we go. <laughs> 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 it's really short, actually. <laughs> um, I was talked out of that, but then I had this relation, and I was telling you about Earl, you know, who was a major. Yeah. And he said, you, You've got to do your uh, two years, get in the South Staffords if you can. And, uh, you know, that's <coughs> hard to be cottage for me. And, yeah. and as I say, when the four day war or six day war was on in Egypt, <laughs> Yeah. Give me a go. <laughs> would it, I, I don't know if you've all got children. I know you're okay, aren't you? But, but would would you would you encourage your children to go into the forces now? No, not now. No, no, no. no, no. no I joined because my both my brothers were in. Uh, one brother, they were both in the stables. One was uh, in the chimneys over in um, what is it? Bournemouth, is it? Probably Middle Forest. Bournemouth. Yeah. Bournemouth. So he was in the chimneys, and the other ones at home. Which he you knew him oh, because he was still in. His brother was a sergeant when I was in. Right, but he was you know. from the Second World War, his brother was, he got his medals, you know. He, he looked up to that sort of thing. So, really, we've done over 100 years in our family, and there's in the staff is actually. So. Wow. No. I was in a fortnight before they found out I was never going to be a soldier, really. I was in the girl guys for two weeks. <laughs> then they found out. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, that's about it. We've done it. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. Is there anything? Is there anything you guys want to say? Is there anything that you want to put down on the tape? We brought back some memories of people I've known for four years. It's, it's all lies. It's all you know, it, 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 it's all rubbish. It's all rubbish, but from him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Sandy's jokes in, so we're all yeah. right. Oh, well, there you go, yeah. 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 yeah.
on tape forever, can you? I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that we crossed over the cross I was crossed down twice and that's anything. I was reduced to the ranks twice. Yeah, you wanted to make I it up. I, I got to corporal twice. <laughs> I was up at my third stripe if I would sign on there and everything. Um, yeah, that was my story of my life. Make him up, give him ten stripes, fetch it up. And, you know, my daughter was born in Berlin. I was, in Berlin. Yeah, I was on board patrol in Berlin, as if we can stop a Russian horde with two, a light yeah, driver yeah, and a ferry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they come, but there's nothing we can do. But, yeah, I, was, I, remember, I remember being an escort for the people who, who were civilians and they paid out the civilian workers uh, for the old brigade and we was their armed escort to fetch it from the bank and check it. And I was ordered to uh, or draw me my uh, me machine gun and uh, three magazines, but no ammunition. Couldn't shoot anybody. Oh, I said, I've got to have three. You like three magazines? I said, I did. did I <laughs> you like three magazines? It's a joke. Bang, bang. Got to run going bang, bang. <laughs> and then that German comes along with a pint, pint, comma, tank and runs you over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That put me as a, a, a swimming pool attendant, um, life saving sort of bloke. And I, I, I took a chap with me, I've got to take another bloke, and he was on jankers. And I said, I'll get you off that, come and be the lifeguard with me. And he said, Oh, mate, you still can't swim. I said, You'll be all right. Anyhow, uh, that was still, one have got to be in uniform, so I said, You'll keep the uniform on and I'll, I'll be in costume. So I, I, I was in costume, and the bloke who run the bus was a civvy. And, um, you know, he's there leaning there. And I said, let me have a go. Put me, and he says, I, I can't swim. I said, you're all right, nothing's happening. And he, if you changed, Kenny Keggs, do you remember? Yeah. He got into the costume, and he says, well, I hope you're right. I said, you're all right, nothing happening. <laughs> and this, Blog, he said, look at your head, it's drowning. I was thinking, and a girl of about 12 got him out. The dragon to the soil. He said, you've got any more ideas like that, you to yourself. <laughs> History of it, and yeah. and now you guys sort of run the, the lease on it and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Tony's one of those who I'm found that Tony and yeah. tell you more about it. Yeah, I yeah. can tell you it was for the, the Colonel of Burlington, yeah. uh, former reg regiment in seventeen oh five. Yeah, uh, Tony knows all He's about the how all the all stuff and stuff in the office. <laughs> 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 it came to the point when the bloke was saying we got to the point where he wanted to leave you now the boss saying so he offered it to us first being staffers because that was the pub that we were born under really. and so we said well we would but he wants some like sixty thousand quid that's for the tenancy for ten years well we didn't have six thousand quid so they said right get all the ex members and new members as well and if they can put something towards it <coughs> well, I can find members, so I was one of them, I put my money towards it, and we got the £60,000 for the 10 year lease. And so we got the 10 year lease. A staff and his wife took over, I can't say too much about this, but the staff and the, his wife took over and he started going down, started losing money. Then they found different discrepancies, so he had to change the landlord who he met, um, what's his name? I forgot his name now. Ransford. Oh, right, yeah. Brilliant. Well, that is brilliant. Not a cool of Yeah, yeah. And he's brilliant because he run a pub before and he's a true staff, obviously. Mm. And then they said, well, we've got all the upstairs doing nothing. So let's make it nice clean out, clean it out, and we'll ask people if they'd like to use them 
meeting room. And I have, they've got quite a few people. And there's one of my, uh, I'm with a group called British Women Sex Servicemen. And they said that they have found it for trouble finding places to meet when they're in Midfield. So I asked them, I said, being a family member as well, make traits. And they said, no, if it's to help soldiers, it's free of charge. So the person goes down there, they do the training down there, free of charge. Obviously they pay for drinks and food, but as the room goes, they have it free of charge. Quite a good thing. Um, it's, 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 it's a great atmosphere. Isn't it? Oh, lovely, yeah. Really and as you say, it's down to with no car park. No, it's very so difficult to get to. But we've got the police for 10 years. I like the fact that you've got a fancy beer as well, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, we've also got the, if you probably haven't been to the old Reese Mugger, we've got our own um, cenotaph now. You were telling me that now. Yeah, it, it looked like a, a sewer hole. It's easy to put a map. You know, with a, a man manhole, manhole, manhole with a plaque on top, and it looked disgusting. So we all decided the same again. People put the money towards it. it and the staff had built it. Uh, you know, we paid for it and built it, and now it's a proper clinic. Didn't have city cities in there. Yeah, yeah it was it was a a Well, that's so. What was that place? Yeah. As we came there, he was putting it, he was putting it away. He's a memoir, and we're doing that. He's a single soldier. Because on the, on the, as you came, as you were coming out, it was a square white plate. Yeah, it was for a single, it was a meal for a single soldier. Oh, yes, that's um, one of these, uh, it was a soldier major one in uh, Iraq, was it? He got shot. Oh, yeah, he got shot in Afghanistan. Fisher. 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 The blood can go up and say, drink to it, you know, salute to people. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right, was he in the 70s? Yeah, yeah. 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 He was like, 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 that have been lost in service and yeah. there was quite a few sort of What I have noticed about this museum though, it's tending to change more towards mercy inside than mm. staff. Even though it's the statue of the regiment and the museum. Well, that's why it's, I it's, 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 it's very well, difficult to get badges or memorabilia yeah, from the staff that's from the museum. Which is what it should be primarily. Yeah, isn't so it? it's going to change, it's going to be the mercy in the regiment and the museum, yeah, sooner or later. Yeah. Everything changes. Where is this um, museum? Oh, the camp. Oh, what's that? Not far from the camp. It's nice. It's nice at yeah. a museum. It's. Uh, I think it's certainly nice for the kids to see oh, yeah, the trenches and, mm. and stuff like that. Jamie was just amazed. And the stuff they brought from out the shop, you know, to take out. Oh, <laughs> well, not they didn't buy it. Grandad brought it. I, I, I <laughs> put it through the shop. I put it in the so we've got to go. But they don't be enough. But they do tours and everything. Like they'll take the grand with the tours and. I didn't know it was there until um, you said. It's quite a difficult place to find, isn't it? Because when we, yeah, yeah. When we, we drove past it, we saw it on the right, and then we were like, oh, yeah, we have to go to a roundabout, yeah, and then we've got to go into the barracks, and then you have to double back on yourself. You have to go straight in there, but they block that road off, so you've got to come all the way around, all the way around. Yeah, you just walk in and I'm like, what's their name? You have to keep going around, keep going yeah, around, 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 around,
But that's our mascot. Was uh, what can we do? Uh, Washman got the little um, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and uh, he's the guardian of him. Well, that's, oh, that's, that's me and my wife at a, at a regimental. Oh, yeah, he's sort of alright, yeah. Oh, no, not so bad at all. Very, very few. Do you recognise yourself there? I think you can't be talking, I might find them. Oh, no, no, no. Are they copies of the 